Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Matthew Gilliland, and welcome to my special, special campfire stories that I call them. I call them campfire stories for a reason. There are things I have faced in Kansas. The terrible, horrible things. Some of you might just enjoy listening, even though some of you might not believe them, but you'll still get a kick out of them. And if you do like these kind of stories, hit the like and subscribe button. Also, share this video with your friends. And to tell you my experiences, the things I experience, the paranormal, I don't have a slow story to go with it. To make it start off slow, it happens in an instant. So you can put that thought away. Without any further hesitation, let's start with the story. I have lived in Southeast Kansas my whole life until I moved up here to Oregon. I was 24 whenever I moved up to Oregon, but that's for another tale. Me and a group of friends that I shall keep nameless decided it was a good idea to go out to the cemetery, which was behind the house. You gotta cross the field to get there. My friends thought it was a good idea to go out there and see what we could find. Well, when we got there, let's just say we bit off more than we could chew. At the age of 17, my friends and I packed up what we needed for this trip and hiked through the cornfield which at that time was tall and full of corn. We were joking and laughing about ghosts and whatnot. My friends made a comment, well, what happens if a ghost was really into you, sexual-wise? I laughed and I said, that's not even possible. We continued on belly aching about our teachers at the time and how unfair they were, because I went to Oswego High School, which is in Southeast Kansas, graduated in the year of 2012. That's for another story, like I said. I'm getting off track here belly aching about our teachers, how we got F's, how we got detentions, just to pass the time. We also told each other which teacher we had a crush on. It was a starry night with a full moon. Once we entered in that cemetery, we didn't notice it at first. We became silent. We huddled into each other, basically clinging onto each other. We had this motto of no man gets left behind when it comes to this. Things started to take a turn for the worst when we went into the cemetery. It was not big. It was it was a medium-sized cemetery. We started to hear rustling in this short, dense, wooded area next to the cemetery. Creeped us out. Legitimately creeped us out, which made us huddle in closer to each other. By this time, we were holding on to each other's coats. What made this situation worse is that the wind picked up, drowning out any noise that was around us. Provided us a little bit of comfort, but it still made us unease. Since our hearing was drowned out by the wind, we used our eyes. Our eyes for our weapon, besides the weapons in our hands. You see, I can see things in the dark. My eyes become well adjusted and are quick to adjust in the dark. We started to see shadows dash across this little dense wooded area. We became a little bit more on ease. Well, as the movement progressed, it started from one shadowy figure to another. It went from two to five to nine shadows staring at us, watching and observing us real closely. After what seemed like three hours, the wind finally died down, and we heard this loud, high-pitched scream. It went from a high-pitched scream to a low, demonic-pitched scream. What seemed like an hour, so in reality it was 30 minutes. These things that were staring at us retreated into this dense forest. My friend looks up at the sky and goes, wasn't it starry a minute ago? I said, yeah, it was. And I kid you not, there was only a patch of clouds over this cemetery. Other than that, you could see stars for the distance. It was weird. One of my friends decided to take a run for it. He was too creeped out by this time. We tried to stop him, we screamed his name. By this time, he was long gone, and then we heard him scream after 30 minutes of running away from us. In a panic, we all ran after him, tried to follow where he ran. We finally saw him laying on the ground. He was in the cornfield, heading back toward, toward my house, and he had claw marks all over him. We picked him up, and something was coming at us, and I said, run, just fucking run. Get the fuck out of here, and you get the fuck out of Dodge. And we ran, and we ran, and we ran, and we ran. What seemed like five miles, but in reality it was only like a mile. Growling was heard behind us. Screeching was heard behind us. And when we finally made it to 
my house. We stopped to turn around to see this horrifying shadowy creature. We quickly ran away. The days I spent visiting that cemetery was my early teens all the way up to until the day I was 23. And that concludes the story of the shadowy figures that attacked us. This story takes place whenever I was 14 years old. I was on this chat named Haunting Echoes at the time. It was for vampires, emos, gothics, and punks. If you are familiar with this chat site, hit give me a thumbs up. Let's give this video some likes. But without any further ado, I'm going to continue this story. My first ex-girlfriend at the time, her name was Ashley. She introduced me to this person named Brittany. At the time, I went through a phase where I believed I was a vampire because I looked at my canines and I thought they were fangs. But I started talking to this person. And she asked me, so you believe that you're a vampire? And I said, yes. Yes, I do. And she goes, that's a crock of shit. I'm a vampire. And I, and that instant, I started to laugh my ass off. And I didn't believe her at first. I said, oh, ha, 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 that's funny as hell. I don't believe you're one. Which made me seem like a hypocrite at the time, but... Anyways, she goes, you want proof? And I said, yeah. I want you to prove to me that you're a vampire. So, I logged off of Haunting Echoes. At the time, I didn't have a phone. We didn't have the money to get me a phone or any of my siblings, but the only phone that was available was my mom's and my dad's. I didn't give this woman my mom's phone number, and right off the bat, my mom got a message. She comes out of her room and says, Matt, it's for you. I rose a brow, and I'm like, that's weird. None of my friends know my mom's phone number. I took her phone, and it says, hey, it's me, Brittany. You said you wanted proof, right? And I said, yeah. First off, how'd you get this number? I knew. I said, you're stalking. You can pay online to see other people's numbers and their addresses and whatnot. I already knew that, but I didn't look your name up. I was still a skeptic. At this point in time, I said, if you're really a real vampire, you'll show me. Then I got a text saying, well, that's a nice boxcar that you have. I lived in the country area between Oswego, Kansas and Chautauqua, Kansas. We had a silo and a boxcar on the property. And my main hangout was the boxcar. And I laughed. I said, good job. You know what Google Maps is? <laughs> I give you an A plus on that for trying to, <laughs> for looking me up on Google Maps. <laughs> and she goes, you're really starting to piss me off. You really want to see me? Come outside. My first question is, where are you from? She goes, Alabama. I said, okay. That still makes me believe that you looked me up on Google Maps. And you looked up my information and you paid for it. She goes, we'll see who's laughing. Give your mom back her phone. Come outside and I'll show you that I'm real. I replied, okay. And if you're wrong, I'm going to laugh my ass off and call you the biggest fake in the world. So I gave my mom back her phone. Living in the country, I carried a gun with me everywhere I went. I took one step outside. It was already cloudy and it was raining perfect not to mention lightning which gave me a little bit of lit my path for about 30 seconds and I screamed where the fuck are you you fucking fraud this gun was loaded because back then I did not know who this person was or if they are a threat or if they were planning on kidnapping me because I was 14 I didn't want to take those risks now here's where the fucked up part comes in walking towards this tree that was a few yards from my boxcar I guess some estimate about 12 foot tops away from my boxcar same distance away from the house and the street light that we had was burnt out other than that it was pitch dark my eyes could adjust really easily to the darkness like i've stated in my previous videos i look around first flash of lightning nothing second flash of lightning nothing third flash of lightning there stood this pale figure on a tree branch for 30 seconds i saw it pointed my gun at it and everything went dark Another flash of lightning. She was two feet away from me. And she said, you know, that shit can get you in trouble, right? I froze, stiff out of fear. I said, you're fucking real. She goes, damn right I am. And I plan on making you 
into what I am. I ran straight into the house, shut the door, and locked the son of a bitch. Put the gun up, crawled on my bunk bed. My brother slept on the bottom, I slept on the top bunk. Went to sleep out of fear. Woke up the next day outside of my house with this sharp pain going through my neck. And I was puzzled on how the fuck I got outside when I clearly remembered I was inside. My mom got another text, and it was for me. She brought it out to me. She goes, it's this person by the name of Brittany who wants to talk to you? I'm like, oh, fuck, no. I I, I don't want to talk to her. My mom looks at me. She goes, girl problems? I didn't want to tell her the truth. I said, yeah, girl problems. She goes, you got to figure this out all on your own. It went from a text message to a call. She politely asked my mom if I was there. My mom handed me the phone, and in regret, I said, hello? And I got, in response, I just bit you. There's nothing you can do about it. And if you tell any one of your family members or your friends, I swear, I'll kill them all. Is that understood? Yeah. Good. I'll be watching you for the rest of your life. Now, to tell you guys, that happened to me whenever I was 14 years old living in Kansas. Southeast Kansas, between Oswego, Kansas, and Chautauqua, Kansas. I moved up here to Oregon, Medford, Oregon, to start my new life. And I don't know what happened after that. I don't know if she's still watching me. But one thing is for sure, my girlfriend does not like the sight of her or this her name. I've already told her this story, and now I told you guys this story. And it will haunt me for the rest of my life. It was my 23rd birthday, and I had some friends come over, and we celebrated my birthday, as usual. Played a little bit of games, drank a little bit. When the time came to wind down, that they all left, but one. He didn't drive, nor did I, and he was too scared to walk home. It was nighttime at this point. So I walked him home, safe and sound, and I took another route home to get me there quicker. So... I walked on this Frisco Trail. At the time, I lived at Rainbow Apartments in Parsons, Kansas. There's a trail that you can walk on. It's called Frisco Trail on one side of the town to the Rainbow End Apartments. I just took three steps on this Frisco Trail, and this fucking thug thought it was a good idea to fuck with me. At this time, it was four or five in the morning, and I did not feel good at all. He tries to start trouble with me. I kept walking, and then this motherfucker makes the mistake of stopping in front of me. You wanna have a problem? I said, there won't be a problem unless you start one. When you start a problem with me, I'll fuck you up. I swear on my life, I'll fuck you up. If you don't move in the next ten fucking seconds. And this little fucking pussy pulls his pistol out on me and points it at me. Care to rephrase that? I said, now you're down to two options. Three tops. One, you either pull that trigger and kill me. Option two, I take that fucking pistol, cram it up your ass, and unload the clip. Or three, you put that motherfucker away, and I call the police. Your choice. He got a little bit closer, and I walked closer to him, putting my head on the barrel. And I said, pull the trigger, you fucking pussy. Make my fucking day. You don't pull it. I'll take it. This point, I can tell he was shaking. His hands were shaking while holding this gun. And I screamed, fucking do it! He got more scared. He was trembling. I could tell his legs were shaking. His face went pale whenever he noticed I was not terrified. It seemed like 30 minutes. In reality, it was only 10 minutes. I grabbed his gun, and I whacked him upside the head with it, and I pointed it at him. And I said, you better fucking remain still. Well, I call the fucking police. The next move you make will be your last. I'm not fucking kidding this time. I will fucking end you if you make one fucking false move. I will unload the fucking clip into your goddamn brain. Not so tough, are we now? And he's sitting there begging me and begging me and begging me not to. And I said, you see, I'm not playing anymore. You stopped me and started fucking with me. You're keeping me from going to my house and going to fucking sleep. I do not feel good. I have drank too much. Or you see, I'm not afraid of you fucking criminals. And I said the best move you can make is stay the fuck still because right now you've made me very hostile. Not a good move to test me. Called the police. They showed up on the scene and I told them everything I've done. They let me go. They arrested his ass. While he was being handcuffed, I looked at him 
And I said, I ever see you again, or you step in my path ever again, I will fucking end you. You better pray to whatever god you believe in, and hope you don't see me. The cops told me to leave, and I left. I haven't seen that motherfucker ever since. I bet you ten dollars. He's out there, either pestering some poor innocent soul to try to rob them so he can get drug money, or he met his demise by fucking with the wrong person. I no longer walk on Frisco Trail. I took other routes, so that concludes that story.